Welcome back TCS TV viewers, Chris Nichols here from TCS TV and today I'm playing with the brand new Canon EOS 6D Mark II. We've got it here early, we're playing with it and uh, I've had a few days with this camera just kind of getting the ins and outs but we've got a really neat venue to shoot at today. We're actually at an airport, as you can see there's a plane behind me. We're at Springbank Airport just west of Calgary and we're with our good friends from DDG. They've been contracted to do this shootout here and it's a very cool venue. We get to kind of tag along, piggyback, do some behind the scenes stuff to test out this EOS 6D Mark II in this scenario. So I'm actually just shooting some of the old avionics and some of the old equipment here. This is really cool stuff and it, it kind of brings up two points I want to make on, on this Canon 6D Mark II. First one is I'm shooting at 10,000 ISO and I'm looking at the shots and they actually have great detail. They're very sharp. We're going to talk more about them in a bit but so far I am very impressed with the low light performance on this sensor. The other thing I want to talk about is the autofocusing system and this is kind of a big bone of contention when people are looking at the 6D Mark II. You got to remember this is vastly improved over the original 6D's 11 point system which was only largely effective in the center point. This basically takes the ADD's autofocusing 45 point cross type array, very, very effective, very fast. I've always liked it. But because they've pulled that array just straight across from that camera, it does have a fairly compressed central zone. And again, that is going to turn some people off. The coverage isn't too bad. I mean, you can get down to the corners. I'm taking a shot of these avionics here, and I want to focus on the, the object right in the middle, and so I can move my point down. But I do have to use the D-pad on the back. I wish I had a thumbstick. It's so much nicer, but they've kind of clutter cluttered this area with buttons, so there's no space for it. So you gotta use the D-pad, and that's pretty slow. And there will be some people who are turned off by the fact that you don't have the large frame coverage. I mean, consider the Nikon D750, the kind of competition to this camera now. That camera's got a higher autofocusing point number array, and on top of that, it's got larger coverage. So people are gonna look at that as a negative. That being said, you can always go right to live view, use the touch screen, move this point around, and get to use the awesome hybrid AF, and that's a big advantage for Canon cameras. The only other thing I want to say about the touch screen, of course, works great, but when you've got the camera up to your eye, you still can't incorporate to move the points around. That would have been a nice replacement for the lack of a joystick control. Now, while we're waiting for them to set up in this airplane hangar, it actually does bring up an important point that I want to talk about. And that is, you know, anytime you're shooting under these kind of lighting conditions with these big sodium vapors, any of you out there shooting sports arenas, gymnasiums, maybe you're at the airport hangar, I don't know, and you got to deal with these flickering sodium vapor lights. And we've got some fluorescent banks over here, all different colors. There's daylight streaming in as well, and it can be a white balancing nightmare. Now, this isn't specifically a 6D Mark II thing, but what I really like on these new Canon SLRs in general is they have very good anti-flicker capabilities and I'm actually very impressed. I'm shooting here in continuous drive. I'm not getting the strange green, yellow, white, green, yellow, white mixture in the white balance that you often get with cameras when shooting continuously. And I'm getting nice clean color, it's consistent and it's handling these sodium vapor lights very, very well. So that's definitely a plus for most of the new Canon SLRs. As for handling on the Canon EOS 6D Mark II, I mean, again, I like it. It's more of the same, and that's not a bad thing. That's how Canon operates. You can pick up this camera, and you're totally familiar with it. Very classic layout, autofocus drive, ISO metering right here on top. I actually like the mode dial. Very easy to change one-handed, so I'm digging that as well. They've got this rubber knurling. It works great. Otherwise, we do have full flip-out screen, totally touch-capable. And this is nice, too. There's just over a million dots. It's decent, it's sharp, and it very much helps when you want to punch in focus. Autofocus on on the back, which I like, and the only complaint I have is my thumb does seem to wander over here, and I have more times than I care to admit turn the camera into live view without that being an intentional thing. Again, some practice and you'll get that, but they place themselves in a way where it's very easy to do that. I thought I'd have problems with that on the Sony A9, but I'm finding this a little bit trickier. But otherwise, it's familiar, it makes sense, you pick it up and you know how it's going to work. The other complaint though that we're going to have here, 
one card slot. You know, this is a problem that we're seeing on a lot of companies' cameras. We want to see dual card slots here. And again, that's not just something that differentiates it from the 5D Mark IV. That's something that makes this camera very scary to use if you want backup or if you want to do a vent or shoot professionally. And that, I think, is something that a lot of modern cameras should just incorporate automatically. So as I'm playing with the camera here over the last few days, unfortunately there are some issues that come up when, when I think about how much this camera costs and yet what you're getting for it. And there's a lot of things that are kind of taking away from this camera being great value for the dollar. I mean, first off, pop-up flash. I know Canon doesn't like to put pop-up flashes on their full-frame cameras, but this is supposed to be an entry-level camera. You know, this is your gateway drug into the full-frame market, and yet I don't have a pop-up flash there. And a lot of people starting out are going to love that just for some basic fill or maybe do some affordable wireless triggering of flashes. So it's kind of unfortunate it's missing that. You know, on top of that, things like 98% viewfinder coverage instead of 100% viewfinder coverage. It's not the end of the world, but look at its competitor at the same price point, the D750, or even the cheaper D7500, you're getting 100% viewfinder coverage. And it's just these little things that kind of creep up. You're like, well, what am I getting for my money then? You guys are definitely gonna like the shutter on the 6D Mark II. Very stable, you know, very little kick. You take a shot, your viewfinder is exactly where you left it. Comfortable, I feel confident I can shoot slow shutter speeds in here. And you couple that with the fact that I'm seeing the sensor performing very well at high ISO, this camera could be a really, really good low light shooter. It's noisy though, I mean, you know, uh, <laughs> Ironically enough, we're on a movie set and I would never use it in a situation like this. That shutter does make quite a bit of noise, but it's stable. Just taking pictures of people, just phone stuff, lots of phone stuff going on right now. But uh, I do have to say, I mean, obviously this part's professionally lit, the light looks beautiful in those shots, but the 60 Mark II overall, I'm actually really liking the files. Just overall color balance looks great. Exposure has been very consistent, very predictable. So I'm feeling very comfortable knowing that I'm getting decent shots to take home. And that's really, really nice. The sensor's doing a great job. The low light performance is good. So overall, very pleased with the image quality that I've got here, but I do want to do more testing. Well, ironically enough, we uh, came to an airport to shoot today where normally we're trying to avoid the air flight paths all the time because of the sound, but we made it work. We had a lot of fun here just hanging out with our friends and uh, doing a little behind the scenes for their shoot. And it gave me a good opportunity to play with the Canon 6D Mark II today, get a good feel for autofocus, low light shooting, handling and stuff like that. You know, overall, my impression before we, we move on is just that it does shoot a lot like every other Canon. There's no surprises here. It's very familiar, it's very functional, it works the way I expect, and there's something to be said for that. But what I'm really curious about on the 6D Mark II is this brand new sensor. So for the next part of our video, we're going to take a look at some of these photos. We do finally have some raw support. We're going to play with the files and just get a good idea of what's unique about this new 26 megapixel sensor. So that's where we're heading off to next. Oh, and this is tough because I really wanted to like this part of it. You know, when you look at the 6D Mark II, the specs as it was released on paper, it was kind of ho-hum, you know, like not a lot of amazing stuff. But the sensor was brand new and that was something to be excited about. But now that we've played with it, well, it's a little disappointing, but let's get to that. First off, let's talk about some of the good stuff. You are getting a resolution bump over the 60. It's not huge, but it's there. And certainly nice, sharp, full detail photos. The other thing we're really impressed about is the low light performance. So as you watch the ramp up here and see, the 60 Mark II actually performs exceptionally well in low light situations. And that's great to see. However, we did compare it against the 5D Mark IV. And even though the 60 Mark II is a lower resolution sensor, uh, we're getting basically the same low light performance, but that's fantastic. I've always loved the 5D Mark IV in low light and this camera will not disappoint. You'll be happy with it. So where is it gonna disappoint you? Dynamic range, you know, this ability to bring up shadows, to pull down highlights, to play with midtones. And the 6D Mark II feels like a huge step backwards, you know. When you look at the files on the screen and when they first come up and in JPEGs and stuff, they look fine, you know, nice color, nice punchy contrast, but if you wanna get creative and play with it, you very quickly realize that there's no meat here to really play with. It's like using a camera from years and years back. And frankly, we've gotten spoiled nowadays with cameras having such excellent dynamic range, but it's a really positive thing, especially for people starting out. Keep in mind, the 6D Mark II is an entry-level full-frame camera. This is aimed at people who are now stepping up from an APS-C 
camera and are ready for a full frame. Or maybe they're stepping up from a 6D and now want to get a 6D Mark II and all the improvements that should come with that. And those people are going to find that now their exposure technique has to be bang on. And if they want to make any sort of corrections or changes or if they want a bit of a safety blanket, it's not going to be there to catch them. So here you can see the camera against the 5D Mark IV. The 5D Mark IV holds remarkably better detail as you push shadows and highlights. And yes, we did really push these hard to see, but it's it's noticeably worse on the 6D Mark II. And one thing I want to mention is, you know, we even tested this against the APS-C size sensor that you'll find in the ADD. We love the sensor in the ADD. It was a huge step forward for Canon, and they've actually now put that sensor in a lot of other cameras like the 7070D and the T7i. So we actually tested the 6D Mark II against the T7i, a Rebel camera. And again, the results, it looks like the Rebel's performing better. APS-C sensors are going to be as better dynamic range and only marginally worse low light performance. If your exposure techniques good. If you're the kind of photographer who wants to shoot photos and just leave them alone, get them out, you'll be happy with the JPEGs. But if you want to play with the raw files, it feels like a big step backwards. And that was so disappointing. It's as if Canon has decided to sacrifice dynamic range for low light performance. And honestly, I would have preferred the dynamic range. Hey guys, it's Jordan. So you know what that means? It's time to talk about video on the 6D Mark II. And I know you may not want to do that because I'm going to continue to harp on what everyone else is, the lack of 4K on this camera. After seeing it in the 1DX2 and then the 5D4, we were expecting it. It is quite odd that it's gone, but there's some other things missing as well. Um, the ADD has a headphone jack. That's missing now on the 6D Mark II. It almost looks like there's space in the body where it should go. Uh, also, the data rate is even lower than it was on the five-year-old original 6D. Um, they've scaled that back quite a bit. Now, compression seems decent. I haven't seen many compression artifacts, but again, it just really shows this kind of artificial handicapping Canon seems to keep doing over and over. And it's a real shame. You have the dual pixel autofocus on this. Autofocus tracking is fantastic. But the 1080 image is still quite soft. And if you look at the 1DX2 5D4, we were impressed with the 1080 capture on this. This is back to that classic Canon 1080 softness that almost looks like 720p video. Um, it's a disappointment in pretty much every regard for video. Uh, it's OK that it's got the feature. You might use it from time to time. But I would never consider this as a primary video camera. So as I ask myself who the Canon 6D Mark II is for, I guess I can't help but feel a little bit of disappointment. It just seems like a lot more of the same from Canon. Some of those are pluses. I mean, it's great handling in their cameras. The menus work well. Their color is uh, really, really beautiful in their files. I mean, uh, handles great. And in fact, the 6D Mark II has a lot of pluses as well over even the original 6D. But is this going to win over Nikon users uh, back to Canon, for example? No. Is this going to win over people who've gone to mirrorless and say, oh, you know what, SLRs are still really great. I missed that. I want to go back to that. This is not the camera to do it. <sighs> Who's it going to win over? Existing 6D users, I could see you guys upgrading to the 6D Mark II. There are some benefits, some resolution benefits, low light benefits for sure. The focusing is fantastic. It's a big upgrade over the original. Uh, and you also get things like better weather sealing. You know, these are all big pluses. but. The video is not going to wow you and the files, unfortunately, are not the big step up that I was really hoping to see in image quality. Uh, is this going to win over anybody else? Maybe a, a backup camera for a 5D Mark IV user, you know, a secondary kind of thing, but that's about it. And I, I don't actually predict this camera is going to sell super well. Unfortunately, though, what really let me down, it is that dynamic range. And if you compare it against some of its competition, like the Nikon D750, which is an awesome camera, has been around for like three years and still gives you basically better everything, uh, it's really hard to wow people with a camera body like this. This is for existing Canon users who need an upgrade, but I'm not going to speak for you, but I have heard from a lot of people shooting Canon that they're in this position where they feel like they're being left behind by their company or, you know, what they want to see, what they want to see change, the innovations that they're asking for just aren't being delivered. And I cannot disagree with that sentiment. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this review on the 6D Mark II. Remember, talk to us, make comments, tweet to us, check out our Instagram pages. You can see files that we're shooting on these cameras. Let us know. Subscribe, please. We love to make these videos for you and we want to keep making more. And until then, we've got more exciting cameras. So stay tuned. We'll see you soon.